There's this anime called Record of Lodos War. Ages ago, I watched the first two episodes, and I honestly don't remember a single thing. But this show has a really nice intro sequence, featuring a great song composed by Yoko Kanno and sung by Maya Sakamoto. It was my most favorite song for the longest time, and sometimes I would watch the opening of that series on YouTube and think about how I should come up with my own story to match the imagery and the lyrics. I will not be writing a whole fantasy novel, but I could come up with the setting at least. At the start of the intro, there's a man in a red cloak standing high atop a dead tree, and later on there's a woman standing atop a pole that has a piece of red fabric tied to it. I know that this is just an anime trope, but I want it to be something that makes sense in this case. The lyrics keep addressing the wind, so maybe in this world there's a very strong and very cold wind constantly blowing from west to east, and all plant life either clings close to the ground or hides in canyons and crevices, except for special areas where humans are getting up to some sympathetic magic. One of the foundational laws of sympathetic magic is like produces like, and the human breath can be seen as a sort of wind, so the holding of that breath is a cessation of wind. In this world, if you take several people, put them at the corners of an area, and have them all hold their breath, it will create a zone that does not admit any wind from the outside. That zone only rises as high as the people who are holding breath, and those people must all be within sight of each other in order for the magic to work. So they stand atop poles that rise above villages and fields of crops, and light lanterns at night. At every boundary point, there's at least two poles with at least two people who take turns holding their breath. The one who is not breathing does not experience any wind, but once it's their companion's turn, the windless zone shifts slightly and leaves the breathing person exposed. So the poles have branches which reach into the windless area, and that's where people stand when not holding their breath. To expand the zone, one needs to either raise a pole further away, or add more boundary points, maybe eventually forming a lattice of many said zones. And because the windless zones don't admit any colder air from the outside, they end up acting as giant greenhouses, warmer than the rest of the world. All that's needed for some ventilation is for people who hold their breath to go on a little break. The whole setup has many implications, but the intro also features horses, and those could be pastured on the windy grasslands. There might be two distinct sets of people in this world, nomadic herders and sedentary farmers of the windless zones. Moving on, in one of the coolest parts of the opening sequence, there's a man riding on a horse and a red dragon flying nearby, but then the head of an absolutely massive dragon moves into frame, a dragon the size of a mountain, and later on in the intro, there's what looks like an Asian-style dragon materializing out of a lava lake, which I'm going to combine with the Western-style dragons. When I think lava, I think volcanoes, which are mountains, and the big dragon is the size of a mountain, so maybe dragons are born out of lava, and then fly through the sky, eating some tiny living thing born by the never-ceasing winds, the way blue whales eat krill. And they eventually grow to be enormous in size, because they carry on growing until they get very old, which is when they land and die, and like a volcano, they erupt with lava, and beget young dragons. The intro visuals also establish the existence of swords and walled cities, and the lyrics mention war. The windless zones are areas of highly concentrated and highly predictable resources, so the presence of warfare does make sense. Finally, there are small things, like this mess from the start of the opening sequence that looks like a map, but it's white on a dark background, so maybe it's carved into panels of ebony wood, Maybe it's the sort of thing that would decorate a rich person's household. And there's this field of red flowers in a windy place from the end of the intro, which fits perfectly with everything else. As for the story, I don't know, I don't like war, but the lyrics are ultimately about love, 
So maybe that's what the story is all about.